Hello friends, we are with the fourth lecture on the white tiger by Arvind Adiga in the ninth week of our course. The topic is literary devices in the white tiger. We will see the objectives and some literary devices like irony, symbols, metaphor and simile. Thereafter, we will look at an assortment of devices in the novel and then summarize our lecture. Let us see the objectives now. To examine the ironic events and actions in Arvind Adiga's novel The White Tiger is our first objective. The second objective is to discuss the major symbols in the novel. The third objective is to illustrate metaphors and images in the novel. The fourth objective is to elucidate the similes many of which constitute the animal imagery in the novel making it a beast fable. And finally, to appreciate other devices like allusion, chiasmus, uh, aphorism etc. in the novel. Let us begin with irony. There are many ironical situations in the novel. The Chinese love of freedom and liberty there is something ironical about it. It is a communist state, it has become a capitalist state and there are reports of not so much freedom in China, but then Balram believes that Chinese love freedom and liberty. In India, we have the case of the educated people ruled by uneducated and not so well educated people in our country. Another uh, irony is normally a river will bring life to people, but in the case of this novel we find the river that is the Ganges brings darkness to the people of Lakshmangar. And also we have many kinds of development projects in our country, but many of these developments are defunct as seen by Arvind Adiga. We also have the case of the irony of freedom for India. We have become free, but then do we really have freedom to live in our country with all that uh, uh, freedom entails? That is a big question for us. We also have an example of the school teacher Krishna stealing students uniforms and also the meals to be given to children. And we have some good money which can be used for the public service, but then some people evade tax and then they do not contribute to the country. We have a faithful voter who goes to the election booth, but he finds that his vote has already been cast by somebody else. So, he is not allowed to vote on his own behalf. We have a narrator who is confident, but not so much reliable. So, a confident but unreliable narrator is a case of irony in the novel. Next, we have the free people in India, but they do not know the value of freedom or some of them or many of them may not know the real value of freedom that we have got from the British people. At the end of the novel, we have a free man, but he is wanted by the police he hides himself under the light of chandelier. That is again another case of irony in the novel. We will see some of them one after another. Now, we have some more cases of irony in the novel. For example, Ashok and Mukesh cross the Gandhi statue after bribing a minister. Mahatma Gandhi stood for truth, non-violence. But here we have the statue reminding people that there is some truth, but all untruthful activities are taking place. The irony of democracy in the country is that still masters own slaves in a free country. We have the poem from Rumi and the other Persian poets and here the poem is about the door is open, but a man is looking for keys. That is how we have this uh, example of a man with a key to his freedom, but he will not escape. We have the case of 
Balram Halwai, he is a chauffeur that is a driver, but he comforts his master Ashok when he suffers loneliness on the departure of Pinky Madam from India. We have a bookseller who sells English books, but he does not know English. Next, we have a horrible situation where a judge is beaten up by police and people in his own courtroom for giving the proper judgment. Next, we have the poor people who dream of getting enough rich to eat. In contrast, we have the rich people dream of losing their weight. That is why this weight loss is a big business in many countries. We also have a statement in the novel, government work is God's work. True, but many devils work there, that is the problem. We have a driver, Balram, who becomes a master at the end of the novel. All these cases of irony support that the novel has ironic attitude vision in the novel. We have quite a lot of symbols in the novel. We begin from the white tiger and go on to the lizard, the blackfoot, the river, the Honda city car, the rooster coop, khaki uniform, Gandhi statue, Johnny Walker black label. Let us see these cases of symbols one after another. The white tiger is a symbol of ferocity and strength. It is a rare species that appears once in a generation. Balram is identified by the school inspector as a white tiger. Later as a tiger, Balram kills his master Ashok who is symbolized as a lamb. We have the paradox of the white tiger that is Balram fainting three times in the novel. The first time that he faints is when his mother is cremated and the second time that he faints is when his father kills a lizard in the classroom and the last time that he faints is on seeing the real white tiger at the zoo in Delhi. Balram is not only a tiger, he is also a fox like his grandmother Kusum. So, he plans cunningly many things. Balram listens, eavesdrops and uses any opportunity for his own selfish ends. This is a different kind of white tiger though it may be similar to the white tiger in the zoo. Next we have the symbol of the lizard in the school. It is a symbol of fear and revulsion for the protagonist Balram Halwai. It is a common reptile that fears human beings and escapes from them but then it frightens Balram and forces him to stay away from the school for some days. When the father notices that the son does not go to school, he comes to the school and kills the lizard. The actual uh, lizard is the stork, the landlord who prevents children from completing their studies. In contrast, Balram who is afraid of the lizard learns to kill his master Ashok in Delhi. He also uses the chandelier as a shield against the lizard in Bangalore. Wherever he goes, the fear of the lizard goes along with him. There is something in him which frightens him about life. The next symbol is the black fort in Lakshman Gar. It stands for the beauty and the aesthetic sense of life. People normally do not visit it as it is an abandoned fort. It also gives a holistic view of the village Lakshman Gar. It is a better place than the unhygienic and polluted village when one looks at the village from the black fort. It is so surprising to see that beauty can be frightening for people who never see it. Balram wants to visit the black fort two, three times he makes an attempt but he is afraid. But when he goes to Lakshman Gar with his master Ashok and mistress Pinky Madam, he takes a time off to visit the black fort. At this time, he is very successful. And from the black fort, he looks at the village and he feels hatred for the village because it is full of 
unhygienic conditions. He hates his village and spits at it. He differentiates himself from the rural folks at this particular time. In fact, his granny Kusum had noticed Balram's interest in the black fort and warned him not to visit that place. But finally, he succeeds in visiting the black fort. The river as we said is normally a symbol of life and also a symbol of growth. Ironically, the Ganges that flows near Lakshman Gar in the novel is impure and unfit for human life. Unlike the ocean which is far away, the river brings death to the villagers. Thus, the river becomes a symbol of darkness and death in the novel. It is a stork, the landlord who benefits from the fishermen and boatmen, not the villagers. Specifically, there are seven kinds of industrial acids which pollute the river as mentioned by Balram Halwai. The Honda city car is another symbol which has some specific importance in the novel. It is personified as a human being having a mind of its own. But ironically, the people do not have any mind nor use it logically or uh, ethically. Balram calls the Honda city car an egg. It is like a fetus in which children remain safe. So, the rich people find safety inside the Honda city car. It is a world of safety, comfort, pleasure for the rich people. It protects and shields the rich people against the poor people or the negative environment. It is again considered to be a man's palace actually. The most important symbol in the novel is the rooster coop. That is why we say that it is a central symbol in the novel. The roosters stay inside the cage and do not attempt to escape from the cage. The main reason is the Indian family. From one point of view, the Indian family is glorified as a great institution. But when we read this novel, we find that there are certain negative dimensions to the Indian family. As Balram says, no one can escape alone just like that from the family system because if one does something wrong, the entire family will be destroyed by the landlords. The butcher is a symbol of the rich and the chickens are the symbol of the poor people. Hence, the cage is guarded from inside out of fear for protecting the family. We have an interest of Balram in this khaki uniform worn by Vijay, the bus conductor. A professional uniform is a symbol of respect and social status. That is why Balram aspires for it. The khaki dress worn by the bus conductor Vijay is inspiring for Balram at the beginning of the novel. When he gets a uniform, he goes out and stands in front of a glass building and finds pleasure in his uniform in Delhi. That is Balram when he gets a uniform as a driver, when he is in Delhi, he stands in front of a glass building and looks at himself and he feels happy about it. The cocky uniform stands for the dreams of millions of Indians who want to move up in the ladder of life. But Balram moves to the India of light that is Bangalore where entrepreneurs do not put on uniforms. A very interesting case is a symbol of Johnny Walker black label. India is divided by the drinks people consume. There are two kinds of people, rich people and poor people and we also have Indian liquor and English liquor. Indian liquor is meant for country boys like Balram Halwai whereas the English liquor is meant for rich people like Ashok, Mukesh and the Stark. The best of English liquor is Johnny Walker Black Label. Ram Prasad, who is the number one driver at the Stark's house in Dunbar, finds pleasure in touching the bottle that itself gives him great happiness. Balram learns how to pour the drink even while driving in Delhi. That is considered to be a supreme skill for a driver. You drive the car and at the same time you pour a wine in a, a glass and serve your master. 
Balram finds this a fit instrument to kill his master Ashok at the end of the novel. At one time he serves wine with the same bottle Balram at the end kills his master. Balram gives the final kick of Ashok's life by smashing his skull. Once for all Ashok is killed. Now we move on to the next topic metaphor. We have some metaphors which are very important. The major metaphors of light and darkness and the rooster coop we have in this novel. In addition to this we have some more metaphors. The water buffalo was the dictator of our house. We have the examples from the novel. There is a water buffalo which is in front of the house and uh, people depend on this uh, water buffalo for milk, financial benefits from the buffalo. The story of a poor man's life is written on his body in a sharp pen. We can see a metaphor here. The rickshaw pullers waiting for the bus to disgorge its passengers. That disgorge is the kind of metaphor that we have in this uh, sentence. Granny always tells Balram Halwai that you are a greedy pig and he proves to be a greedy one. The Honda city is a more sophisticated creature with a mind of his own. That is how uh, Balram looks at it. A good driver must roar to get ahead on the road, roar like a lion. That is what uh, Balram Halwai learns from the driving instructor in Dunbar. A man's car is a man's palace. The Honda city is considered a palace. Next, we find that Delhi had been invaded. It is not that uh, some enemies invade Delhi, it is invaded by uh, both rich and poor people, particularly the poor people from neighboring villages for livelihood. From here on, we will look at some similes in the novel. Simile is the predominant figure of speech in the novel. It contributes to the realistic mode of the novel. We have many examples, we will see them one after another. My silver Macintosh laptop works like a dream. Balram has a Macintosh in his Bangalore office to run his driving business. We Indians take to technology like ducks to water. Next is children like the guilty conscience of the government of India. Government of India has a conscience. They sleep like one creature, a millipede. Poor people in a small place, all of them live together and sleep together. Boulders like the snoozing hippopotamuses at the zoo. Next, the wild boars, two teeth like little tusks. The wild boar is already a boar, an animal, and in addition to that, tusk is added, that means. Uh, his size, huge size like an elephant brought to our mind. The women pounce like wild cats on a slab of flesh. When men from villages go to Calcutta or some other towns to earn money, when they return, the women of the houses, they pounce on them, get their money from them. A rich man's body is like a premium cotton pillow. Again, another wonderful simile. My father's spine was a knot of rope like a dog's collar, like little whip marks in his flesh. This particular image is really disturbing for Balram Halwai. Why should the poor people be like this? We see some more similes here. The lizard was like a half ripe guava. Lizard which frightens uh, Balram Halwai looks like a ripe guava. My whole life I have been treated like a donkey, the father of Balram says. Mastering a car is like taming a wild stallion. A car is a mechanical object which is compared with a wild stallion. One who learns to drive a car learns to tame a wild horse. I emerged from under a taxi like a pig from sewage. Balram says this when he learns driving from his driving instructor, he is given some additional job of cleaning, doing some mechanical job. This country was like a zoo. 
we are like sponges we absorb and grow servants are like sponges like eunuchs discussing the kama sutra the voters discuss the elections in lakshman gar the voters are compared with eunuchs who can't do anything about the results drivers grabbed the magazine there is a magazine called murder weekly and that is a source of entertainment for the drivers so the drivers grabbed the magazine like a bunch of dogs rushing after a bone the cars of the rich go like dark eggs down the roads of delhi the various horn sound like a calf taken from its mother the last one here in this slide is we were like two separate cities inside and outside the dark egg that means inside the car there is one city outside the car there is another city that is delhi let's see some more similes here remember we have said similes in the novel contribute to the realistic mode of the novel i sniffed in between the mats like a dog why are you grinning like a donkey look at the animal images dog donkey your driver swinging a key chain with the keys to his master's car like a boy with a toy some kind of sound effect we have in a boy with a toy the spit burst from his mouth like a fountain the drivers were gazing at a mobile phone like monkeys in delhi drivers are given cell phones by their masters not all of them get it when one gets it all other drivers look at the cell phone as an interesting object as the jams grew worse so did pinky madam's temper in delhi t shaped concrete structures like a line of anvils in delhi always some kind of construction work is going on i couched on the floor happy as a dog balram says about his own attitude to his masters i knew that it was my duty to be like a wife to him that is ashok when pinky madam separated from ashok the servant is expected to behave like a wife and take care of the master her chest bobbing up and down like 3 kilograms of brinjals in a bag pinky madam we said disturbed the eyes of balram this is one example we have many more similes here the mirror swings open like a door into a changing room the hotel guard will shake a finger like a school teacher the drivers were crouching and jabbering like monkeys we already noticed drivers are compared with monkeys the book seller sat like a priest in charge of his shop though he doesn't know how to read and yet they treat us like animals the poor work for the rich throw their life but these poor people are treated like animals the big t sign glowed like a lantern in the dark in huge buildings neon lights are glowing and he remarks on one of them mr ashok behaved like a little guilty boy a beggar with wild unkempt hair in long coils like snakes again we have the reference to animals the eyes of a cat watching its prey again a cat is here i gazed at the machines like a man without a mind exhaust fans turn slowly like the wings of giant moths an observation of balram halwai we have some more here the old muslim with a pitch black face that was bedewed with sweat like a begonia leaf after the rains the men were defecating in the open like a defensive wall in front of the slum this happens in delhi the reflection of a naked electric bulb shone out of the scum like a yellow gemstone a pyramid of helmets looked like a pile of severed heads we would have seen on roads on both right side and left side in some places where we have helmets for sale how how do they look a pyramid of helmets looked like a pile of severed heads that means cut off heads the politicians drank the whiskey like it was lemon juice 
it is normal for them, very ordinary for them. Three small red drops had formed on my flesh like a row of ladybirds on a leaf. My hand shaking like a lizard's tail that has fallen off. We both sweated like pigs. The lion and the lioness were like a true city couple in the Delhi Zoo. We come to the last slide where we have a number of similes. I watched him walk behind the bamboo bars. The him refers to the white tiger. Black stripes and sunlit white fur flashed through the slits in the dark bamboo. It was like watching the slowed down reels of an old black and white film. He was walking like a thing under spell. I do not know how long I sat like the Buddha. I saw a thin white line of scalp between the nearly parted hair leading like a painted line on a highway to the spot on the crown of his skull that is Ashok's skull. A hissing sound came out of its lips like wind escaping from a tire. Men and women in Bangalore live like animals in a forest do. So, all these similes that we have noted primarily focus on certain animal characteristics of human beings of both poor and the rich. There are many other devices in the novel like chiasmus. We have the example here. Once I was a driver to a master, but now I am a master of drivers. This shift a master of drivers we have in a driver to a master that is called chiasmus. We have an aphorism in the case of every man must make his own Benares. Everyone has to meet his own fate. Then we have ambiguity in some sentences here. Are you a man or a demon? Ashok is killed by Balram. What is he? Are you a man or a demon? Neither I say. I have woken up and the rest of you are still sleeping and that is the only difference between us. Balram differentiates himself from the rest of the people. Simple difference is he has woken up from his poverty, from his slavery. We have some allusions to Shakespeare's play Macbeth. After killing Ashok, we have some reference to Macbeth. All the whitening cream sold in the markets of India will not clean my hands again like Lady Macbeth. Balram says, after killing his own master, my hands cannot be cleaned by all the whitening creams. He has to live with the guilt of the murder. We have a quotation repeated two times. This is actually part of this Persian poetry. You were looking for the key for years, but the door was always open. This is the simplest wisdom that we have in the novel. There are mythical references to Krishna and Balram. Krishna is a teacher, Balram is a student. Though Krishna is a younger and Balram is the elder divine beings in the myth, we also have references to Ram, Sita and Hanuman in the novel. To give you a summary of our discussion on literary devices, first we saw the objectives, next we mentioned several cases of irony in the novel then went on to discuss symbols in the novel. Again, we focused on metaphors which contributed to the images in the novel. We spent more time on similes which have contributed to the realistic aspect of the novel. What we primarily notice is the beast aspect or animalistic aspect of both rich and poor people. We also have some allusions to Shakespeare, we noticed the chiasmus in the novel and looked at something like an aphorism also in the novel. Here are some references for you. You can understand more about various kinds of literary devices in the novel from some of these references. Thank you.